progress in San Diego. Ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I'm your host, Walter Davis, and this evening I had the pleasure of having a Dr. Pat Washington, who is a scholar, educator, and activist. Welcome, Pat. Thank you so much for having me, Walter. Yes, it's just great to have you on the show and reconnect with you. Um, you want to talk about some programs dealing with scholarships right now as one of the main issues, right? Okay. Uh, but, but before we get to that, can, can you just kind of identify you? Who is, who's Pat Washington, the, the scholar, educator, and activist? Talk about that. I think if I were to talk about myself just a little bit, then the things that stand out for me is that I believe that I was put on this earth to help people address the systems in, in situations of inequality. And for me, education is the is one area where if we equip our young people with the education that they need, we can do a lot to eradicate. Well, certainly that, that's an aspect that is prevalent in our communities. It appears as though there is an active, um, I want to say, effort to dumb people down. I mean, it seems like education programs are being cut everywhere we look. Um, there, there doesn't seem to be any type of uh, funding shortage for war, though, and for the war machine, and, and for, for spying, and, and for police efforts. So. I, I see a dumbing down of our society, so you're right. Education is the key to assuage poverty and so many of the other social ills that we have. Uh, but again, before we get into that, can you just talk about yourself briefly to identify who you are, please? I have taught at the university level, I've taught in the community. Currently, I'm teaching parent advocacy classes with the San Diego Unified School District's Parent Outreach and Engagement Department through the Carol J. Ballard Parent Center. And we have an great uh, experience this particular series of classes because we received, because of the work of Elita Shannon at the Ballard Parent Center, a target foundation grant to integrate arts and culture into our classes. So this past Saturday, for example, we took our parents and their families to Julian. And Julian has a rich black history background. And our, our families had a wonderful time. We spent the day together learning and I believe appreciated all that black people have contributed to the San Diego community. And then that's something a lot of people don't know, is that New Lane was sort of originally inhabited by, by black African people. Americans, yes. In fact, the first person to find gold in New Lane was a black man. And the apple pie and, and, and the different yes. recipes that people yes. would like to go up there for were started by a black woman, correct? Correct. Now, and American Newton also, in addition to that, the Julian Hotel, as it's known now, used to be the Robinson Hotel, which again was something that was started by a black family. Wow. Right, so we, we learned a lot. And we were blessed to have uh, Dr. Chuck Ambers of the African American History Museum as our narrator. He was dressed in period attire, so he was dressed as Fred Coleman, that gold mine that you talked about. Uh, he was dressed as Fred Coleman. He stayed in character as Fred Coleman the entire day. And he was just phenomenal. Well, I know how fantastic he is. He's been on here already. He's on a couple oh, of shows on, okay. on here with you. He's, okay. a, he's a fantastic uh, historian and just very interesting. Yes. So I know that you were very um, dedicated and passionate activist. I've, I've observed you over the years here. Um, what is it that you would like to share with the audience today? Well, today I'm really glad you let me come on the show to talk about this. One of the things that's happened most recently is that the San Diego Unified School District passed a resolution in, in, in mid-2009 that they would ensure that every child who graduated from the San Diego Unified School District had completed the A through G curriculum. And I'd like to talk about that a little bit more when we get a chance. Sure. Well, what exactly are the A through G requirements? I'm glad you asked. So basically, there are 15 courses that the UC system and the CSU system require as a minimum for students to be considered for admission. A through G classes are 15 courses in math, um, science, uh, world languages that students need to take in order to be at least eligible for the UC system or the CSU system. One of the things that the community needs to understand more fully is that there are classes that simply also help our students be prepared to be lifelong learners. So the classes that you're going to need for 
uh, vocational training. Their classes, even though they're not required for the community college, it helps our students to have had those classes before they enroll so that they are prepared to be critical thinkers. They are prepared for the math that they might encounter in community college. They are prepared to be world citizens, get into be world citizens as a part of their academic background. And those 15 courses are rigorous, relevant classes that all of our students need to have before they graduate from the Santa Cruz Unified School District. And it's exciting that the district has made this commitment to our youth. So how is that going? I mean, in, in, in terms of people actually getting prepared and, and, you know, focusing on that, what is the progress in terms of reaching the students? That's a great question. In a nutshell, I believe what, what's happened is the San Diego Unified School District has put together a task force that's made up of parents, students, educators, community members, business leaders, and that task force meets on a monthly basis to look at the areas that need to be strengthened or reinforced in some way so that all of our students can meet the eligibility requirements for the ATP classes. And so, the, for example, you can't just automatically assume that you can say today you will take ATP classes. You can't assume that every student is actually ready to take those classes. You have to understand that some students may need some supports put in place for them to be successful. And so one of the task force uh, committees, subcommittees if you will, is looking at what kinds of support services need to be in place for various types of students and all students. So students with special needs, uh, they may need particular reinforcements or infrastructure in the school system so that they are able to successfully take AP classes. Uh, English language learners or, or ESL students may need particular programs or uh, accoutrements in place for them to be successful. So I was looking at all of our students. Some may need um, you know, particular classes or they may need different, different kinds of classes, different ways of learning to, so they can demonstrate they've mastered the subject matter, those kinds of things. So, so what I'm hearing you say is that there is a possibility of tailoring a, a program for students based upon what their particular needs are. Yes, in a sense, the, the, in a sense, the idea is that all of our students, regardless of economic background, race, ethnicity, uh, language, has the capacity to successfully complete the A through G course curriculum with the proper support in place. And so, what we need to do as educators and community members is make sure that we one, believe in our students and know they can achieve once they're given the tools they need to, to be able to be successful, and then we put those mechanisms in place so that they are sure to have every opportunity possible. I see. So in, in other words, so who would be identifying, you know, if the student had a special need, how would that be monitored? How would that be detected? Okay. One of the things I want to back up a little bit, though, because I want to talk a little bit about the groups that made this all possible. Mm -hmm. sure. And so about a little over two years ago, a group called the San Diego Education Consortium, mm -hmm. which is made up of, at that time, over 30 businesses, uh, business leaders, different organizations, business leaders, educators, again, students, some of the same stakeholders that were are involved now with the district's process got together and looked at the fact that we in San Diego County, in the San Diego region, were not actually graduating the number of students that we need for the present day workforce in San Diego County. And so those committed individuals started looking at ways in which we could work with the San Diego Unified School District to really pay attention to what we needed to do to make sure all of our students were successful. And so that group worked with the school district and if, if and as I said, in 2009, about June or July, the district passed a resolution that they would make the A through G curriculum the curriculum for all of our students. And so you're looking at a two-year process of volunteers working with the school district, and then the district making that commitment and putting the resources in place to, in fact, put that possibility before all of our students. And this year, one of the things that's going to happen is that it actually should have already, it has already happened. Each ninth grade student has at least three of the A through D courses she or he needs to begin that path. And I want to just highlight uh, one of the things that happened um, about a year ago is that the Education Consortium 
produce this volume. It's not that big a volume, but it has a wealth of information that shows you where we are as a district in terms of which schools were the most successful in offering the A through G course sequence. And so you got a sense of some of the places that we needed additional support systems and some of the places that we um, were doing quite well. And then more recently, the San Diego Unified School District partnered with Air Trust West, which is a national organization that works to promote high academic achievement for all of our students across the nation. And they actually went in and surveyed our the graduating class for 2009 to look at how they were doing in terms of access to A through G classes and success in A through G classes. And some of the things they have did, if I to actually get back to your question, mm -hmm. is that there are certain populations of our students in the district who, in fact, need to be taken into consideration while implementing this 15 course sequence. Students with ESL students, students from economically disadvantaged backgrounds, students of color, particularly African American and Latino students, and students who uh, may have uh, a particular need in terms of ability. Wow, that is, this sounds phenomenal. And, and, and so can a student opt out not to be a part of this program? Well, the exciting thing about the research that's been done is that we give our students the respect they deserve, and that respect means we believe you can do this work. We just need to know how we, need, how we can help you. When we give students that, that support that says, we believe you can do this, we're going to help you. When you give them a higher degree of relevance, a higher degree of rigor, research shows our students rise to the occasion. They rise to our expectations. And so we don't want to entertain the possibility that we'll spend our time thinking about how students can opt out. We're looking at ways to work with parents and students and community members to say we have a collective responsibility to first ourselves opt in and then get our students to opt in. So it's more like opting in to A through G. So you, even, you don't even evaluate the possibility of opting out? I don't. Okay. Somebody else might, but I believe, I believe the research is, is well documented that we believe in our students and we give them what they need. And again, some students are gonna need a different set of tools than, another, than other students. But when we, when we get those tools right, our students achieve. And right now you're talking about in the San Diego County region, uh, several years ago, over 350,000 jobs had to have people come in from outside of the region with the degrees and the educational background and the, and the skill set to do those jobs. We have so many qualified, in the sense of if we give them what they need and get them ready, young people in this community, that we educate them properly, they can also fill those jobs. And that's partly why a g is so important because it's not just preparing students to go to college. It's also for those students who want to go into career technology pro te technological programs. It's also for people who want to be lifelong learners. It's for people who want to think critically about the world around them and be, be an integral part of that world. It's about having, in some cases, a livable wage. That sounds like something I want to be involved with, for sure. I, I have a place for you. I knew you would say that somehow. I thought <laughs> I you, I knew you, you You would kind of slip me right in there. And I, I said, but I'm ready. I'm, I'm here. I want to get active. So on that note, um, can people volunteer to become part or to help out? We actually need people to become a part of this movement for the educational success of our kids. The Ballard Parent Center, which is I work directly under Anita Shannon. Uh, we offer classes called Project Eugenia. And, and Eugenia is taken from that third principle of Kwanzaa, which says we have a collective responsibility to promote the well-being of our communities. And so the A through G effort really is one of those shining examples of the need for us to work together as a community for our kids. And so there are a number of ways in which we can all be involved. Because one of the, the community reform models that the school district is using 